screen now. Um, with that agenda. And uh, some tabs. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, so just uh, so everyone's clear, uh, Matteo and Giovanni and, uh, and Mike, uh, we're all here in the same room. OK. Um, so uh, we're all here in London at UCL, uh, graciously provided by Matteo and, uh, and Forig and the Silver Lab. Uh, so we're all just hanging out, talking open worm. Um, and um, so there's a couple things that just came out of our discussion just today um, with regard to the muscle cell, which uh, we'll talk a little bit about. Uh, before we get to that, I um, want to remind everybody that uh, so last week we were in Munich. Um, the poster was presented. Uh, there's a, if you click on this link here, uh oh, I see nobody's actually in on this uh, document. Um, I don't know if you guys want to click on it. I pasted it again in the chat there just in case. Uh, uh, is anybody having trouble uh, getting into it? Is it not like shared or something? No, 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 no. I think that uh, you need permission. Is it saying you need permission? Yeah. Uh, I am. Okay. okay, hang on. Let me just. Uh, let me, ah, yes, I'm sorry. I haven't actually shared it in the meeting minutes directory. So, uh, okay, try again. Try hitting it again. Okay, there you go. That'll help. Uh, you'll probably. Okay, so um, so we presented the poster. So thanks to everybody who helped out with that. Uh, several folks helped out creating it uh, to start off with. I think Giovanni drove it. We had input from Matteo. I think several others of you had input as well. Um, Korg helped. Uh, the Silver Lab helped by printing it out. Um, Matteo brought it to the meeting. Um, and then Matteo Giovanni and I presented it. Uh, I gave a spotlight presentation, pointing people towards the, um, you know, towards the poster. I think it was well received. Um, we had some questions raised at the meeting. We can go over as well. Um, I think good discussion points. But um, overall, we were excited to get a chance to be picked to present uh, this topic. And um, I think it's just for the for the project. We get another uh, you know publication credit for the poster. Um, so all good stuff. Um, uh, let's see. Does anybody have any questions just about um, you know Munich in general? I mean, it, so I mean, there were several other present. I mean, a whole lot of other presentations. I guess we took notes on. Um, uh, I don't know. If, uh, you know, if there was something that's you know, more relevant than anything else. I don't know if uh, you guys want to say anything about that, Monty Matteo. Anything about Munich that you wanted to report your experiences? So. Yeah, always interesting to talk. Those people that have not the same goal, but have some experience with some of the stuff that we're trying to do. So, we're going to put on, like, put on a good job of connecting questions that kind of really kind of play to do in the unit meeting. So, in terms of like completeness of our model, how relevant it's going to be to us. So, we have all the missing information, like the difference of the synapses and having either a more detailed model. And so, all of those things are very helpful to reassess where we are with the project, what kind of steps we need to take in order to basically reach a sort of a result that is interesting not only for us, but for the community in general. So I found it particularly interesting. Cool. Cool. Folks uh, have questions? So um, I thought looking at some of these questions raised might be interesting. Um, so Giovanni, you uh, you added these guys here, and then uh, Andre actually uh, I think added some uh, some information as well. Um, do you want to walk us through this off at all? Okay. Yeah. Who's ringtone is that? Who's that ringtone? So like Godfather? No, no, no. That's like. Uh, 
Anyway, okay. Sorry. Um, I just want to make sure that we got everybody in. Sergey, can you hear Giovanni? Giovanni, mm. say something. Hello? Ah, uh, yes, I have to. Uh, Probably need to speak up. Um, okay, so I just connected some questions after talking to people at the meeting. So this is what consistently was coming up when we were presenting the poster and discussing the people around um, so that, so that was at the beginning of the talk. So the first thing was when we were saying that. One of the future plans was to map the position of all synapses. They were saying, how are you going to do it? And what kind of resolution of those images um, for the last six weeks? I don't know if they that. Sorry, Giovanni, can you speak louder? Uh, Maybe okay. you can switch the uh, microphone. Yeah. I'll mute. Can you hear me? Some, some feedback. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, yeah. It's good. No, no, no. Hello? Sound. Yeah, good, good. Can you hear me? Yes. Probably, yes, but nobody can. Nobody has the sound actually turned on. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, no, no, I need to turn it on. Yes, yeah, somebody needs to turn it on. Sorry. No problem. Okay, okay. We figured it out. Um, okay. So I was saying that uh, this is basically the output of uh, several discussions, some of which during presented the posters are interaction with people, and some of which are just discussion over the span of the conference. So a recurring question was when we say, oh, the future, what we're going to do in the future is map track all the, the position of all synapses. And uh, they would say, how are you going to do it? And do you actually have all the slides? Uh, and I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> so basically, that's why I put this one in. So, and then the, this was, re Andre replied to this with, very, with a lot of detail. And I guess we need to have some discussions on that later on. Uh, then another question was about uh, what is what is our plan to model the Cagans neuron in more detail? Because at the moment the connectome we have has dummy ion channels like placeholders. Um, so wh wh what is our plan to like bridge that uh, information gap? As in, how are we going to retrieve all that stuff? Um, so what I'm asking here, and, and this is what they were asking to me, and I obviously didn't know the answer to most of these questions. Uh, so I'm asking to the group if anyone has more experience on this. Are there, do we know if there are any existing measurements or different kind of CL against neurons that you can use to do parameter optimizations or similar to the way we are doing it for the muscle cell? And did anyone ever model any of the types or the CL against neuron as they did for the muscle cell? I know the answer to this. Okay. <clears throat> There's very little data because the experiments are extremely difficult. Also, um, it might not be quite as important mm -hmm. because these neurons don't really, s they don't spike. They have quite a, they appear to have quite a limited range of behavior. So they might behave quite simply as sort of semi-passive transducers of signals. Analog. So it's, it's, it, it, it might work. We have to work on the assumption, because the data is so limited, that the dynamics, the electrophysiology of the muscle cells is much more important to get right than the electrophysiology of the neurons. So that doesn't mean that we don't have any um, curves at all? We don't know how, what it looks like? Um, well, the there is some data, and to be honest, the best place to get it is probably Cambridge, which is lucky. Mm -hmm. But uh, not very much, no. There's not a great deal of data, but their behavior might not be very interesting, actually. 
they don't spike. They just they seem to just. Transform. So what I mean in that case, how would we? I mean, what assumption would we make? With so we know they're not spiking. We just like drawing a bunch of parameters that don't as long as they don't spike. Okay, so <laughs> let me speak up here. So for this part, I'm, I'm um, muting again. Wait. Okay, let's see. All right. So, okay, so point one, synapse positions. Steve Cook's lab has the complete data set from the White and Brenner paper at the original connectome. Uh, it's annotated with um, the number of uh, the, the uh, ID, basically, for each neuron throughout the whole data set. So I think that accounts for what Andre put in uh, that we have a fraction that slidable worm, the slidable worm on Worm Atlas has only a fraction of the images. Um, basically, there had been there there had been a hesitance to release this full data set for some reason that I think like they finally got it. There, like people finally got it. There. So that full data set is available. Like point one, the full data set is available. However, that being said. Um, the full data set may not be enough uh, because it uh, may not be sliced finely enough. Okay. And so Steve Cook's lab, the, which is the Emmons lab, um, has actually been redoing EMs for certain parts of the worm and for like male versus hermaphrodite, um, and has been going in and filling in additional details. So Giovanni asks, is, is there a goal to tr track synapse position as well? Uh, and I'd say, yes. yes. They, they, they are mark, they're remarking them up, and the database system that they had been using does track the position. Um, but they had no means or desire to translate those coordinates into any other uh, representation. Right? So, um, so this is why you know, we sort of stepped in. This is the reason the rationale behind mm -hmm. Which is to go back and redo the synapse positions of the original data set, but also to help out with the new data sets to get the positions and fill them in for parts where they don't exist in the interview with parts. So, it, so we do need to engage in this sort of data collection process. And that's, that's why we're doing that. So that's the strategy. That's the basic strategy. Just to accelerate. Yes. Um, so that's on the synapse position. Now, okay, so on the function of the neurons, Mike says uh, maybe it's not that interesting. Um, so I would I would respectfully disagree. Um, so yes, um, but there's another system that doesn't spike as well, where people care a lot about the dynamics, and that's the retina. So the retina in the mammal doesn't like the, the neurons there are basically sort of analog signals. Um, and, but people are doing the same kind of connectomics that we're seeing for the Sialgans there. In fact, like Sebastian Sung in his connectome debate like pointed to the retina as kind of equivalent to the Sialgans. I think that the thing is, and the reason we're going through all these links, is that just because it doesn't spike doesn't mean that the dynamics, even analog dynamics, aren't extremely important to understanding how the nervous system computes. So, um, now, where do we get the data? Yes, you're right. There's limited. There's very limited data for this, and that's for a few reasons. One, um, it's because uh, electrical geology on the field is long, hard. Basically, no one's ever done it too much. They're going like muscle cell traps and limited neuron traps. Um, well, the reason that I'm hopeful is because labs like the Sternberg lab at Caltech that kind of hosts worm base. Um, has been presenting data at the C. elegans meetings, which are going to start coming out in papers, where they're embedding uh, fast calcium dyes into genetically encoded in C. elegans. So I've seen data like this presented at the last meeting at UCLA that I attended, um, where they're starting with the sensory neurons and they're embedding uh, this called DCAP3, I think uh, newer ones are like DCAP5, this is calcium sensor. That that uh, optically shows you the calcium uh, uh, the the calcium concentration, 
And the nice thing about silicon's neurons is that calcium is like the sodium, right? Um, like it takes the place of sodium in normal cells. So calcium is actually a better proxy for the function of these neurons. And they're seeing all sorts of cool dynamics. Um, the problem is that this just basically got started by lots of people. There's not a lot of papers that are out there that have this. So we're left in an interesting position where there's still more work to be done to even guess at what the ion channel should be. Um, but there's very limited places where you, know, you can get the data for individual models. So um, that's where we are. Um, we have to deal with that reality. Um, I think it's important that we you know, confront it and have a strategy for it. I do think that we can, if we can get to a point where all we have to do is like run the optimization thing on some traces to the neurons, right? Like if we have the model defined like close, and all we need is a data set that like we can go to the Sternberg lab and say like hey, it'd be really great, you know, if you could just focus on some traces for the stuff that you're seeing. We're gonna make this for a couple of hours, right? The last thing I would say is that um, David Dalrymple, who's a um, sort of loosely contributor affiliated with Openworm, um, I've received a grant to very much do this kind of investigation work where he both stimulates the elegance neurons and records them to see what their dynamics look like using optical techniques. And um, I'm hopeful that that project will bear some fruit and eventually find its way back into uh, this project if we can use that data and you know, build a model on top of it. Uh, that would be great. But that is probably still at least several months away from what I understand. So, that makes sense. What I was mainly getting at. Sorry, did, no, no. So what I was what I was basically saying was, um, there's limited data, and I think we're lucky in the sense that we've got more data for muscles, and I think it's. I, I, I think it really is a lot more critical to get the muscle electrophysiology right because it is a lot more complicated. And I suspect, I could be wrong, but I suspect that with the neurons, while it would be lovely to get really accurate electrophysiological models and if we had the data, you know, that would be great, I suspect we might be able to get away with it you know, if we had some rough guesses. Uh, and we might not be, but I suspect that if, if the data never never surfaces, we never have this good, great data, mm -hmm. I still think we might be able to get, get a reasonable guess. So I'll say one, one thing, and hang, hang on, actually, I think I can hear myself in that microphone, so I think we can leave it there okay. and not mute it. But, so the, the, the philosophical point here is just that, um, that uh, the circuit is a nonlinear system, right? But the, the, the C elegant circuit is, is this nonlinear system, which means that um, small perturbations in a circuit may have a large impact on how it computes. Um, so my concern, so th this, is, this is my concern about the accuracy issue, is that um, if it's not exhibiting nonlinear dynamics, even if they're not spikes, um, that we'd be off in you know, the behavior. So, but, uh, so I don't know. Uh, I guess the question is like, what level of accuracy do we need? To, to but there is always the, the sort of wild possibility of using optimization on the behavior of the worm yeah. as the target. But that's yeah. that's really that's almost science fiction. But that's a, that's. A, I don't know. I mean, if we can at least have the neurons be units that could express the appropriate dynamics, then then yeah, then we could think about that. I mean, then we wouldn't necessarily be. Have it. This has been the whole idea all along: is that we're going to have to fill in gaps anyway, and that any neural system has gaps, whether it's a C elegans or something more complex. Because so, if, for example, we could, we could, this is really in the future, but if we could quantify sinusoidal movement, for example, and try and optimize using a huge combination of neuronal parameters and select for the ones which results in sinusoidal movement, then that's a really sort of Hmm. High-level way of getting the neuronal, di inferring the neuronal dynamics, so sort of inferring biochemistry think, yeah. from really from behavior, which would be nuts. That would be awesome. It's what evolution does. I right. think that's uh, it's a searchable space, isn't it? Like too many dimensions. 
No, I mean, it's, this is in the future. Six parameters per neuron. No, but you'd make the assumption. Neurons. You'd make the assumption that uh, that there's two or three classes of neurons and they're all the same. That's what you can't. You, you don't measure from every single neuron because every worm will be different. And yeah. So you need to do some kind of informative guess yeah. to constrain the search space. Yeah. Okay. But that would be very cool if we did yeah, that. Yeah, would be cool. And as I say, that's what that's what nature does. Nature, Na nature looks for behavior to optimize the ion channels, not anything else. So, so try to evolve a neural network from scratch. No, well that's constrained. <laughs> we, we know that, so we don't need. To, but yeah. Anyway, so yeah, but that's quite far in the future. I, I wouldn't spend too much time. That's fair. OK, well, so just to pop back up to the question. So did, does that address the question? I think so. Um, Andre, since you have filled in quite a bit here, um, is, that, is that clear on the points that you put? I'm sorry, uh, Stephen, do you ask me? Yes. Uh, I was I was listening, but um, I think I'm maybe not quite uh, understood the question. Sorry. No problem. So just on the, um, the document I just pasted in, um, you had uh, responded to the questions that Giovanni had written. And I just wanted to see if I had addressed more additional questions. Uh, in that document, right? Yes. Uh, OK, OK. So let me just rewrite things in here just um, to re summarize so that that's clear. So, so in here, um, the answer is he says he has the, he has one hundred percent of these slides. And oh, very cool. And in addition, uh, they are working to develop new apps to those slides um, with new images that we can also elaborate on. And the other answer is there any existing measurements here? It's um, limited, but potentially um, the stern curve uh, for others using Did anyone ever model any of the types of C. elegans neurons? Not in a multi compartment. What about Bartolin? What about single compartment? Holy cow! <laughs> you Jinza just joined. How the heck are you, man? <laughs> I haven't seen you in a long time. Also, we can't hear you. Oh, that's why. Sergey, you muted him because he was being loud. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, all right. Um, maybe there's, it's noisier there. Nice to see you. <laughs> Maybe we should let him talk. We unmute him. Okay. 
Apparently I can mute him, but not unmute him. Unmute yourself, Jingo. Maybe we should move on. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. If, uh, if you can pop in. Okay, so that's the questions. Um, there was another note. You want to go into it? I don't know that it's worth. Um, and then a lot of time on. We talked to this guy who's basically developing dedicated hardware for some particular kind of neurons. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of thinking, oh, it would be cool to run the worm on a dedicated chip. Uh, but he didn't was particularly like enthusiastic about it. He basically. He, First thing is said is that his, his particular hardware is uh, only two compartments and optimized for retina stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's it's very specific for that kind of stuff. Uh, and then he also said that it, I mean, it basically wasn't interested in uh, exploring even the possibility because he believed that we are missing too much data. Uh, so we go back to the discussion. Uh, how do you get the data? An interesting thing this is said is that with money, with today's technology, you can actually you could actually get all that data we are missing in mm -hmm. one year. Right. By using like most advanced tomography technologies that are out there. Right. So there are labs that do that, you just give them one or two million dollars and do it for you. And then you can simulate whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> maybe two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars we could give them. <laughs> I, think, I think we could give them two hundred and ten dollars, <laughs> so, which is the the extent of the donations we ever received. <laughs> so we need to negotiate. Yeah. We need to negotiate it now. So yeah, it was funny because like it's interesting to see how people. I mean, and he also said, like, um, so th this is like, we, we always talk about how cool this stuff is, but it's, it's good sometimes to hear that not everyone thinks that, so that, I mean, we can, we can respond to arguments and stuff. So this guy was saying, um, so why, what, if, this is, if this is so interesting, why no one ever did it? <laughs> Which and I was about to ask him like so is why why no wherever the the stuff you're doing before, before you did it yeah. <laughs> so we, I, so well, I, the answer to that is because the technology to do this is has only become cost effective within the last yeah. few years that's why yeah things like the Amazon cloud and yeah. right. that's why I don't know it seemed entrenched in his uh, point of view it was. Interesting to talk to him because I didn't actually even know that that kind of scanning technology was available yet. I we probably did. I did. Um, so it, it is interesting, like to talk to people, even if they sometimes don't agree. But uh, that's pretty much it. You can read this section, and <laughs> it uh, it tells you the story. Okay. Okay. So, uh, let's see, we're like 30 minutes in, so let's keep going. Um, so a topic that I think involves um, this group as well as the Siberi group is the muscle cell next steps discussion. Um, before I get to that, I also just want to mention that Tim and I met, um, anyway, I guess probably before I left for Germany, and we talked a little bit about uh, well, Tim, do you want to say what we talked about just briefly before we launch into the muscle cell thing? Did 
enemies still there. Okay, well, you might be coming up mute. Anyway, we were looking at the car model, the, uh, the whole cell simulation model that was published in the cell, and we started looking through the different data tables that are there and to see basically how they built it and what data sets they had. And one of the things that they leveraged was a, a whole cell uh, metabolism model paper that had been published two years earlier for this mycoplasma. Um, and this apparently was work that hadn't been really done before. Um, and we started asking around a little bit about if such a thing has been done in C. elegans muscle cell. Um, apparently it hasn't. <laughs> So um, it's good to know. But well, we're trying to compile a list. We're trying to go through every data table the yeah. car model used, like to build this thing. Some of it is like what molecules are where. Yeah, what kind of data would be needed to do the muscle cell? Right, right. Or what would we need to do any cell in the any cell, cell. Is, right? But muscle cell would be uh, good. To start. Right. And to just kind of make a compile list and say like, okay, could we, you know, what could we do to run a, a given cell in the C. elegans through the whole battery of Procedures that have been done on mycoplasma in order to get back to the place where you could simulate you know, that. Um, so, um, so we're just getting started on that, and I think um, Tim needs to do a little bit more. He was, he was sending emails that he wants to do a little bit more on that before we're coming back. But um, I think it's pretty cool stuff to have a list of like if you wanted to do the same thing that you did with mycoplasma but for C. elegans, like what would you need? Mm -hmm. And um, so I think we'll be putting that together. Obviously, it's harder because there's a lot more genes, a lot more going on inside the cells, but it's a good program. So just wanted to get on that. Tim, did you get off mute? Do you want to say anything more about that? Oh, I, I'm talking, but no one can hear me. I'm going to drop off. And when he pops back in, we can. OK, let's uh, talk about the muscle cell stuff, because this is uh, the discussion we were just having here and involves almost all of us. Um, so really, the second diagram is an important first set of steps. So we sketched this out just here in discussion and about what would be needed to get moving. So basically, OK, well, let's start with Mike. Do you want to update on where you got with uh, the muscle cell model, where you now got with the muscle cell model as a starting point? And that represents this box here. Can people hear me? OK. So with the muscle cell, me and Alex basically are still at a stage where we're deciding. So there's an implementation, but we're still at a stage where we're trying to figure out by intuition some good starting parameters for, an optimiz for optimization. Uh, Alex is working on the potassium channels, and I'm working on doing the same thing for calcium channels. Um, that's basically basically the stage we're at. It's still we're still like way way behind schedule, really, because we were hoping to have this done and dusted two weeks ago, but unfortunately, it hasn't really happened. So um, yeah, we've hit some stumbling block blocks with the mathematics of the boil boil model, um, which we still haven't quite figured out how we're going to circumvent. Uh, yeah, Alex is working on potassium channels. I'm working on calcium channels. Hopefully, before long, we'll have a good starting place point for optimization. Okay. Um, so I think you're selling yourself a little bit short. So I just pasted in the Python file that has the current like implementation um, in, in in pyramidal because there's actually some code there, and so you guys should check it out. So yeah, it's true. Obviously, you need the, the starting parameters, but there's Oh yeah, the model's good stuff. In there. The model's complete. We just we now need starting parameters. Right, and so we were talking here uh, about what would be needed to, to go there, and, and there's um, sort of a detailed point about the mathematics that we don't need to go into, but but we sort of alluded to it last time that um, this may involve um, uh, actually extending neuromel to lens, or at least giving an example. And so we're reaching out to Borg to uh, help us do this. Um, some specifics about the Hodgkin Huxley equations that need to be uh, that we need to figure out how to implement. And, um, if we don't have that, then we have to guess some of the parameters. So we're thinking maybe if we have a good example for about how to do that, uh, we can get that going. 
Um, okay, so that's so that's one topic. The topic that then relates to SPH that we're interested in, um, you know, getting um, Andre and Sergey's perspective on here is to think about you know this this integration between what Mike is doing in Pyramidal, which is um, behind the scenes actually running uh, the muscle cell model, and what's happening as in SPH, and what some concrete steps could be to directly start um, you know leveraging uh, SPH. Now this is different. This is separate, as you can see here, from the port of SPH to uh, to Java, uh, and that's in the context of a larger simulation. Um, and so we're we're wondering if you know, to what extent we want to embark on this um, sort of a direct uh, prototype integration now um, or not. And so there was some discussion around this. Point. So, <clears throat> so Andre and Sergey. Once, uh, once we have this muscle cell that's optimized and spiking in a way that's similar to the electrophysiological data, which should hopefully be relatively soon, and once um, the SPH solver is in such a in such a situation that in such a condition that you can apply an arbitrary arbitrary force to the to a muscle cell model. Um, to some sort of three-dimensional shape. I don't know how you think about it. If you think about it as about, about a force field, as a force field or a potential field, but in any case, once once the SPH solver is in a condition where you can support that, I would quite like, as a prototype, to to try and integrate the electrophysiological model with the SPH model. And basically, have a a simulation where once you have some action potentials, you can see the you can see this cuboid or whatever this shape contract in response to in response to the spiking muscle cell. So I suppose my question is, is that something you're interested in in doing that uh, sort of as a prototype? No. I need to wait for the delay. So either Andre or Sergey, if you can respond to the question of what we'd like to do to integrate SPH with what Mike is doing. Well, is it necessary um, for this um, to have our code uh, in Java or not? Is it necessary to have it in Java? Well. Uh, it's ideal to have it in Java for the big picture. And in the short term, it might be possible to get away without having it in Java. Really, we definitely want to have it in Java if we want to build something that's scalable beyond one muscle cell. But we can probably get something that we can publish with just the C++ implementation. Does anybody? Okay. Okay. Before going to Java and the simulation engine, basically, we could do a prototype integrating the current version of SPH with the current version of uh, the solver for the neur neuronal simulator Mike has. Uh, by, and I'd probably this could be a scary thought, as in. Um, it's still different technologies, so that could be scary. But but we were thinking of scenarios where Mike can describe that. What, yeah, what I would like to do is so the electrophysiological model is written in Python. What I would like to do is see if it's possible to get your SPH code in C plus um, plus, get a DLL from that code, import it into into a, an, another Python program, and integrate the SPH and the and the my electro the electrophysiological model and get get them talking to each other. Um, do either of you know how difficult it would be to get your C++ code um, talking to a Python script? We had a look at the SPH code, and it seems doable, but I don't know what your views are, this are. 
uh, I really don't know how difficult it can be because um, OpenCL uh, code needs uh, OpenCL driver uh, for the specific device which exists in the system. Um, well, so when when I run the source code, uh, it um, compiles um, CL code uh, on runtime uh, taking um, uh, the compiler which is uh, provided by um, the driver uh, of the device which is in the system. So I don't know if it is possible um, to make something like uh, DLL from it uh, containing all of this which is necessary. Uh, we need <laughs> to do some experiments in this field to feel how it works. Right now, I don't know. It should be possible yeah. in theory, but I see that there could be problems, even because when we were using OpenCL on the the Java stuff with Matteo, we had problems, similar problems to that when there's dependencies, and depending on what you do, it doesn't doesn't see native files, and that's what Andre is saying is that you you created the LL, but so we don't know until we try the answer is yeah. I guess and uh, that it's a very like it's a very good uh, uh, comment from Andre I think. Um, by the way, maybe uh, we can combine uh, all the sources in one kind of project. So um, not a library, but just a coexistence of uh, C++. Uh, C OpenCL and uh, Python uh, code. Yeah, you could do yeah. the other way around. Yeah. yeah. So import uh, Mike's simulator into, into the C++ program. Into, a, into, an, into an external C++ program. Yeah. We should, um, at some point, we should do some experiments. But that should be when, when the muscle cell model is complete and when the SPH is supporting force fields. Is it ever going to support four spins? Um, or something like that? Uh, yeah. How, how would the contraction work, Andre? So if you imagine describing a, a muscle cell as a set of particles, how, how, how would the contraction work? Would it be, how, I mean, in SPH, how does the fact that you're applying a force work? We discussed that briefly last, last time. time. I wasn't there. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I wasn't there. So sorry if I'm asking yeah. the same stuff. Yeah, and basically, third uh, after it, this would be a way for like after it's started to okay. generate a force bar field that then would affect the particles. So that you basically could do that. So okay. Do you wanna? I'm afraid this is a bad time for me to leave, but I'm afraid I have to catch my train. Okay, um, yeah. It's a bit unlucky. Um, but we should continue this discussion next time because I think it's really interesting. Cool. Okay, come on. Okay. I think there is time to come to an agreement about this stuff because the muscle cell is not optimized yet. So yes, yeah, there's, there's definitely another two weeks. No problem. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, that As be in, I would be very happy if it was ready in yeah. two weeks, but. We have time. Bottom line. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks for coming. Yeah, it's nice seeing you. Okay. Thanks for doing this. Oh, sure. I'll see you soon. Okay. Okay. Uh, next time, Mike. Like, next time, Mike. Do it, Cambridge. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So Mike's back up. Um, so I mean, maybe maybe this is a good time just to go to Andre and Sede and ask uh, how things are going in the SPH realm in general. Yes, any updates? Ah, well, um, we are still trying to make uh, 
uh, elastic matter around together with the SPH, but uh, some technical problems still exist. Uh, again, uh, these new changes introduced some instability. Uh, I don't know um, precise details because uh, Sergei is mainly doing this. Um, at the beginning it works uh, reasonably and then uh, starts to um, well, uh, amplitude of um, uh, beca became uh, gross and uh, then uh, everything um, brings to uh, house uh, explosion. Um, I think still some some just problems of realization. Um, we planned to fix all this together um, on Thursday. Also, it will be tomorrow uh, when we will meet and work on the code. Mm. Ah well. One uh, small result in SPH only. Um, I have uh, found uh, parameters uh, which allowed me to get a realistic um, picture of um, water drop falling uh, at um, some amount of uh, water. Um, so after it drops, we get uh, a picture of um, what a uh, fountain uh, against this direction and a small uh, drop uh, of water at the top of it uh, as it goes in a real um, a liquid. So um, I'm going to make new video and um, uh, upload it to YouTube. Um, it's very important because uh, I even didn't expect it uh, that PCI SPH will allow uh, such um, realistic effects. It was surprising for me. Oh, that's why I'm glad for this and would like to share it. And well, um, suddenly um, during these two weeks, I decided to pay uh, some attention to simulation of n neurons. Uh, maybe not not simulation, just some to, to get some understanding of uh, what we have in this field, what we can expect, um, and so on. So I have read uh, our mm, existing. Uh, documentation, tried uh, that uh, get made uh, program, but well, unfortunately, I can't register in it uh, to get all features working. I don't know why. Why? Mm. It's very interesting, but I, mm, I I tried to check a lot of, of slices. Um, they have uh, quite high resolution, but. I cannot notice uh, places where uh, synaptic uh, contacts take place. Maybe I just um, don't have um, an ability to see, um, to know what to see uh, there, how these uh, synaptic uh, contacts look like. But this is something I would <laughs> like to know. Uh, if, uh, I will have an ability to discuss. With somebody of you who can uh, teach me this <laughs> magic stuff, how neurons are connected with mm. Well, that's all. Sorry for taking so much time <laughs> in this discussion. Let me show you what that looks like. Yeah. Okay. Um, Full 
Yeah. Now I can see. Okay. Um, this is shared also by the way. I don't know the URL in the thing, but just look. So this is this is the worm, okay? Around mm -hmm. the edge here. Right. So that made you can zoom in. So let's just look at this little box. Okay. And this is literally what you see in the box. Okay? Yes, yes, yes. Now what you want to notice about this is first of all that there is this circle here which is um, a piece of uh, neuron and you can see actually this one has a number in it, 70. And uh, this one down here I think is number 63 and this one I think is like 77 or maybe 71. Um, anyway, um, these are two synapses here attached to this dendrite. And you can sort of see the direction of this because in here there's a, it's darker and grainier and this is where um, synaptic uh, vesicles are. You can sort of see that they're little circles on this side. Is it between those two? Or is it yeah. the uh, uh, darker area? Is it between the, the, the clear circle with the number 70 and the darker areas? Or is it the darker areas? As in, is it just the interface between those two areas? Or is it the darker, grainier areas? Ah, so um, it's both. It's the interface between the two, but in the cell, that's just uh, the membrane. And oh, so what's on the okay. inside of the presynaptic okay. cell are the um, vesicles that spew chemical. So this vesicle is, the, the darker area is a vesicle. It's a collection of vesicles. It's a collection of vesicles. And a collection of proteins that sit on the inside of the membrane of one of the neurons okay. that grab onto the vesicles and open them up so that the neurotransmitter can go to the other. So. Okay. So what, what, in this presentation, where is the, the synapse is, is the, like, the sum of all those elements? Yes. Okay. And so it's basically where those two red arrows are, would be a synapse. Okay. Um, although in this case, maybe the arrow should be going the other way, because it's actually from the darker one to the lighter one. Um, but that's the, that's the idea. So this is what you would mark and say that there was a connection between these cells. Um, now, you kind of have to look at a lot of examples of this in order to, you know, in order to really get comfortable in this particular picture, this is only those two, or does, is there others? Um, there, I think in this slice, those are the obvious ones. Below here, there's another cell, and I think it may synapse in, in another slice uh -huh. through the. Through uh -huh. the so that would be you'd be looking for something that looks more like this. But. Uh, one concern that I have is that people who are trained to do this. Can they reasonably expect to find all 6,060 whatever synapses in the worm? Or is there always going to be some synapse that you're not too sure if it's a synapse or not? Yeah, there may be some, some may be more questionable. But is it like what kind of uh, match do you expect? Is in like they're going to get 90%? Yeah. Is that more or less reasonable? Yeah, I think so. Is a ten percent tolerance of like mistakes? Um, I I don't know if anyone's done a quantified a study. <laughs> I, think it's a I just don't. Know. I just don't have yeah. an, any clue. Yeah. So I'm just trying to understand if we have six thousand, how many can we expect to reasonably be really kind of sure about? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it's cool. Here's another picture of what. What we're seeing, so this makes it a little bit more clear that are a bunch of vesicles on this side, mm -hmm. and then a membrane interface, and then the dendrite. Okay. So this is another way of looking at the same thing. And also, you can see there are two sort of axon terminals, ah. and so synapse one, synapse two, dendrite. That's cool. So you see how this? You can see how this kind of looks like this. 
that you can just kind of looking for this pattern. Mm -hmm. Is it always like two actions, and one dendrite? No. Or is it kind of like a bit three and one or one or one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it can be all sorts of different configurations for that. Does that make sense? Also, Andre, so we have this instance of CatMade on Amazon that has these images loaded that we can create accounts for. In fact, we need to do this desperately. So if you want to play with it, um, yes, yes, I do. So let's set up a time to do this uh, early next week. Would that work? OK. Uh, let me. Someone else can join as well. Mm -hmm. No, it's just catmate training. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Sergey, um, want to say? Let's see. Mm. Uh, as Henry said, we're working on elastic matter. Uh, maybe that's all. <laughs> we're still working. Okay. Uh, do you guys know working with Jinta? Yes. Uh, Jose is working on um, uh, replacing uh, existing um, old uh, speech method of um, interaction of particles with uh, borders. Um, but for PCI speech, um, we should better use another one. Um, which has many advantages and uh, which increases stability. Uh, so there is uh, an article which describes it in good details, and um, he just plans to uh, implement, implement it. And um, I'm expecting that it should happen very soon. So it's non it shouldn't be uh, quite difficult. Sounds good. Um, all right, so should we go? Do other folks want to do we have other updates? I think I have one make small one for the rest of our time. Yeah, yeah. small one. Um, thanks to Matteo, Gleb, and Sergey, I we now have. Eclipse distributions for all the operative systems. So I'm just pasting a link. I, I posted a, uh, a thing in the blog with the links to the to the packages. So now, when people join the project or when we need to like set up a fresh development environment, we can just go there and just download. So thanks to everyone who contributed to that. Everything is in our Amazon bucket. Awesome. So that's the first step towards making it easier for people to join and even make it easier for us when we need to set up. Also, there was a hackathon at INCF last Friday that I was a part of, and I spent my time there. Still working on an Amazon instance that would pull in this development environment and make it so that you could just like have anybody load up the full dev environment and um, still running the troubles with like Ubuntu desktop. But I'm continuing to work on this for a couple hours every week mm -hmm. to get that forward. So that's an important step. Is it the actual remote desktop thing that you're having trouble with? Right now, yeah, getting Ubuntu desktop. Sorry, like the permission. It's fucked up. But uh, that's awesome. So thanks, thanks to you guys for getting that. Um, I think that's going to help a lot. I mean, several folks have come in to contribute, and then I'm a little stuck at the at these things, yeah. So. So we still need to do other stuff, such as maybe package of Virgo. Yeah. 
Virtual is pretty standard, but like try to make it easier. It's things like this right. have stuff that people can just download. Maybe mm -hmm. script to copy the stuff from the yeah, build or an app into into the web server. That now it, that's a manual step. So we need like slowly to facilitate that kind of stuff. But this is a good a good start. Okay. Um, Tim, in the back, um, I alluded to our conversation that we had uh, a couple weeks ago, um, and that we're set to. Um, did you want to add anything to that, or anything else? Uh, no, you uh, you did a pretty good job of describing what what I'm working on. So, um, you know, there's so much data and so many so many things. I've got about thirty or forty papers I've been reading through. And uh, just just continuing on, you know, the the, the good thing is, is that I was thinking it was like the the yeast cell, but um, times a thousand. But really, it's not because there's a lot of uh, you know gene expression is the same I think uh, throughout. So I think um, we can get a pretty comprehensive uh, set of data that uh, will, will get us going towards the more detailed and infinite aspects of the uh, cell itself. Which is pretty cool. It would be nice if we could at one stage develop a implementation of the car model on the same engine as the worm. Agreed. Cool. All right. Um, I also note that by September 30th, we should have streaming incorporated and released into what? Virgo, the web sockets, or what is that update that's coming? Web sockets in Virgo. Okay. So they released that, and then we need to then make we, it work. And then we can, and then we can start. <laughs> I started right down on the 30th. Starting the 30th, we can start working. Shouldn't take too long, but you know. Okay. Okay, cool. So, if everybody's happy, we can break here. Is there any other topics anybody wants to raise? Growing glides. Okay, great. Thanks to everybody for joining. Um, we'll do it again in two weeks. Thanks. Uh, good evening, Sounds good. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye